Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Carrie's Gardening Channel. So today is July the 20th, 2019, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about nasturtiums. Now, um, nasturtiums are, they come in different varieties, and they come in multiple different colors. Um, you have some that are actually doubles, and um, you have some that do trail and climb. Now, um, this one here, I'm not exactly sure which variety this is. This one came up on its own. Um, you do have some with variegated foliage. And uh, nasturtium flowers come in uh, different forms um, for the flower shapes. And uh, there are multiple different varieties out there. Um, I have grown the tip top. Uh, I believe it's the Alaskan mix. I really like those. They had nice, beautiful, white, variegated foliage. Um, I've grown the jewel mix. Uh, I really like the whirly bird mix, um, and uh, I grew the Ford Hood mix, and um, I think I've grown some different ones too. Uh, the papaya and cream mix, I've grown that one. So there's a wide range of uh, nasturtium varieties that you can grow. Now, um, nasturtiums are sometimes used as what they call a trap crop because uh, aphids love nasturtiums. So what some people do is they plant them and the aphids go to the nasturtiums and then um, they just pull the whole plant out and get rid of the plant and they get rid of the aphids at the same time. Now, um, that's not something that I do. I um, like to grow the nasturtiums just for the flowers and the foliage. Um, You can also use these in uh, companion plantings, like in with your uh, cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and your cauliflower for, to help repel the cabbage butterfly. They work very well for that. Um, I really liked when we did companion planting. Um, I wish we actually did that again, but, but I noticed a big difference when we used the nasturtiums and different things in companion planting. And um, these are also really good for um, helping to break up like hard clay soils and uh, I used them for in my one flower bed the soil was really hard and uh, not too many things really grew in it and I liked nasturtium so I kind of just planted them in there and just left them go and they started growing and after a few years of doing this, the ground became so soft that I could actually just reach my hand down in and um, just, you know, plant the stuff without needing any shovel or rake or anything like that. So it really helped to break the ground up. And um, these have roots that just go and go and go. Now, um, you can do these by seed or you can do them by stem cuttings. Um, I have had them root already by stem cuttings. And um, these are edible. Now, I personally, myself, have never tried to eat them. But you can eat the uh, flowers. And uh, from what I'm told, they have a peppery taste to them. Now, I've never tried it, so I don't, I can't tell you that. Um, but this one here is spent, and it'll produce the seeds then, which you can then harvest and dry. And um, you can plant them for next year. And you can see down here, this one here is just getting ready to open here. And this one appears to be a trailer. Now, sometimes caterpillars will go ahead and munch on these things. I don't bother with that. Um, I, just let them, I just let them go. Uh, they're not hurting anything. They're eating this here. They're not eating the vegetables. Now, this right here is a, a leaf miner did this damage here. So that's what did this damage here to this. And you can see this is kind of just trailing back through here. And this is what the buds look like on the sturtiums when they're just first coming on. And uh, when your seeds first start, um, coming on your nasturtium plants they'll be they'll be green and they'll be small 
and as the seeds mature they will get larger and they will grow and um, when they start turning like a uh, light brown color and they'll actually just fall off in your hand is when you can start harvesting them now sometimes the green ones will just fall off in your hand and you can lay them out like on newspaper and let them dry on there you don't really want to lay your seeds out on plastic because um, they will actually like mold on you and um, that's not good you really want to have your stuff dry for you so just lay them out on some newspaper and let the seeds dry see on this one down here the seeds are just starting to form right in here and sometimes they'll give three seeds sometimes they'll actually give more seeds it kind of just depends but um, if you've never tried growing nasturtiums I highly recommend them and uh, there is a little snip a uh, little clip and uh, a book called carrots love tomatoes and uh, it's a companion planting book and uh, it has in about nasturtiums and how you can uh, use these in companion planting I'll have a link down in the description for that book um, that's one of my favorite books that I had bought and uh, it tells you about companion planting and different plants and how to mix them in with like your vegetables and things and um, I've heard some people say they don't like companion planting um, that they haven't had it work for them but in my experience I really like companion planting so that's what I'm basing what I'm telling you off of in my experience with companion planting Oops. now nasturtiums can take full sun and they can also take part shade and um, they're just a really interesting plant I like the ones when they trail and they're trailing down like over walls and stuff that's really neat looking and uh, the blooms on them are really pretty and I actually had some that had crossed and they were trailing and they um, crossed with the uh, tip top Alaskan and what crossed with them was the foliage and I had trailing foliage coming down with um, variegated leaves now unfortunately I lost the genetics to that one so I don't have that variety anymore that um, I had collected but your nasturtiums will cross back and forth and sometimes you can get some really neat um, varieties that way when they start crossing so and um, nasturtiums do like moist soil now um, they will grow in drier soil uh, that spot that I had where I was planting them to help break the uh, ground up that soil stayed drier sometimes you would have to give them a little drink of water but um, for the most part they just were carefree and grew on their own and people do put these in hanging baskets and uh, you can use them in containers I've used them in containers a lot and they're really pretty um, the thing you have to watch with the container though is that they don't get too tall and then fall over if you get like a windstorm so that is something that you do have to watch out for and these look really pretty if you pair them with four o'clocks and uh, I do have a video on my channel for how to start four o'clocks from seed So if you like my video please like comment subscribe if you please don't forget to hit the little notification button that ties when I put a new video on you can also follow me on Twitter I have a link down in the description for my Twitter account thank you for watching and hope you have a nice day bye